Hello and welcome to the video Spring Boot Shopping Cart Tutorial with me Nam Ha Ming from Code Java.net. Through this video, I will guide you how to develop the shopping cart feature for an existing Spring Boot Web application with the following details. Items in the shopping cart are stored in a database and customers must log in in order to use the shopping cart module. I will show you how to code the fundamental action of a shopping cart like adding items, removing items, updating quantity of items. And you will also learn how to build a shopping cart module with a responsive user interface using Bootstrap 4 and the query on the client side and RESTful web services on the server side with a Spring Framework. I have an existing Java Spring Boot project here, the Shopee Frontend project. This is a project for an e-commerce web application based on Spring Boot. And let me start this Spring Boot application. And as you can see in the Spring Boot application configuration file, it is configured to be running on an embedded Tomcat server listening on port 80 with the context path is slash shop me here. And it is using the database MySQL on localhost here. Okay, the application is up and running on port 80 with the context path slash shop me here. And let me use Chrome browser to uh, access uh, this uh, Spring Boot application on uh, localhost slash shop me here. And you can see this is a web application that allows uh, sellers to sell products online and allows uh, buyers or customers uh, purchase uh, products online. And you can see a list of uh, product categories in the home page here. As the customer, I can uh, view uh, products in a specific category. For example, in a, in a desktop computer here. And you can see the products in the desktop uh, category here. And I can view the details of a specific, uh, specific product like Lenovo Idea Center 3 desktop tower here. And this is a details based of a product here, you see. And as a customer, I can add this product to a shopping cart. Here you can see, I can choose the quantity here and click the add to cart button here to put this product to the shopping cart. But the shopping cart feature has not been implemented yet. And you can also see the high bling cart in the a navigation bar here that uh, allows the customer to see the, the shopping cart content here but uh, it has not been implemented yet so i suppose that you have an existing java web application in which you already implemented the product listing feature like this uh, product details like this and uh, so we are ready to implement the shopping cart feature and this is a user interface design for the shopping cart module, uh, which I will show you how to code uh, to resist the video. This is the user interface uh, on uh, computers or devices that have wide screen. And to the right is a user interface uh, on uh, uh, mobile phones or on uh, devices that have small screen. You see, so the shopping cart module user interface is uh, responsive uh, on uh, different devices. And as the customer, I can see all the products I added to the shopping cart so I can make a purchase later. And I can see the subtotal of each product here. I can increase the quantity or decrease the quantity of a product and see the total amount of all products in the shopping cart here. And I can also remove a product uh, from the shopping cart. So those are the uh, fundamental uh, functions of a shopping cart module. So I will walk you through the development process of the shopping cart module uh, in a Spring Boot project based on this uh, technologies, Spring Boot Web and RESTful Web Services, Spring Data JPI with Hibernate Framework for the data access layer, Spring Security, Tamleaf as the template engine, HTML5, Bootstrap 4 and jQuery on the client side and MySQL database. In this video, I'm using the following software programs 
Java Development Kit, Spring Tool, Sui IDE, MySQL Community Server, and MySQL Workbench. So I hope you are using the same and you can use the latest versions of these software programs on your computer. And in order to store items in the shopping cart into a database, uh, we need to create a new table, say cart items here. This is an intermediate table that implements the many to many relationship between the customer table and products table here. Uh, because a customer can add one or more products to the shopping cart and a product can be added by one or more customers. And I draw this class diagram to help you understand the class C uh, which we are going to code in this video. First, in the repository layer, we need to create a new entity class, uh, card item that maps to the corresponding table, card items in the database. And we need to declare a new interface, card item repository, which is a ZPI repository. And we define some methods for the operations of the shopping cart, like find my customer, uh, delete my customer and product update quantity. And in the business uh, service uh, layer, we need to code the shopping cart service e class that depends on the car item repository here. And it implements the basic operations of a shopping cart, add product, remove product, and update quantity. And in the controller layer, we need to code the shopping cart controller, which is a Spring MVC controller that handles the request to uh, show the content of the shopping cart for a specific customer. And for the responsive user interface of the shopping cart module, we need to create a RESTful Web Service C controller class uh, here uh, to implement the methods which will be consumed by the query on the client side to update the shopping cart. Now, let's Create a new table in the database uh, to store items in the shopping cart. The cart items table here, and you can see there are four columns ID, customer ID, product ID, and quantity. So this is my SQL workbench on my computer, and this is uh, a ShopMe DB uh, database, uh, which is used by the application. And there are several tables in this uh, database. And uh, let me create a new table here. And table name is uh, card underscore items. Uh, this uh, table is an intermediate table that implements the many to many. Uh, relationship between the uh, products table and the customers table but uh, I created a new a primary column here for implementing the entity uh, class easily auto increment and primary key here and the second column is the front key to the product table product and score ID data type is integer and the third column is uh, customer underscore id which is a foreign key to the customer table data type is integer and the last column is the quantity of the product uh, with data type is integer okay last for the table uh, that stores the items of the shopping cart. Quite simple, right? And uh, click apply button here to create the table. And we need to create two front keys. Yeah, the first one is uh, to the product table. Okay, underscore cat underscore product. And the reference table is uh, products. Here, reference column is ID. Here, sorry, is product ID in this card items table. And the second front key is 
uh, to the customer table Your reference table is customers here and reference column is customer ID yeah okay correct click apply apply finished and you see the new table card items uh, here and select all rows and you can see no rows at the moment and we have four columns id product id customer id and quantity and in the java code we need to create a new entity class card item yeah to map with the corresponding table in the database so in the project here yeah, I create a new entity class here name is uh, card item and here uh, we use the JPA annotations okay and it's best uh, to stop the application for now here I use the annotation uh, entity from uh, JPA here and table here with the name is the table name card underscore items and the primary uh, field uh, private integer id use the id annotation and use the uh, generated value to specify that the values of this uh, field will be automatically generated by the uh, database with the strategy is uh, identity yeah. if you are familiar with JPA so this should be very easy and very uh, familiar and uh, uh, we have a reference to the product here product product and because uh, the relationship between card item and product is uh, many to one so we need to use this annotation many to one uh, because uh, uh, because uh, a product uh, can be added to the card item one or more times so the product can have uh, one or more card items and the Zoi column is uh, the primary column name is product underscore id yeah and similarly we need to have a reference to the customer private customer customer here yeah. and also use the annotation uh, many uh, to one because the customer can uh, uh, choose uh, can add uh, one or more items in the shopping cart and the Zoi column is uh, customer underscore id yeah and the last column is the quantity of the product quantity uh, this a uh, few has the same name with the column in the um, database table so we don't have to use any annotation that's it and we generate the uh, vector and set the method uh, for this entity class here yeah. select all the generate okay that's for the entity class card item here Next, uh, we need to create a new interface card item repository in order to use uh, Spring Data JPA for the data access layer. So, in the project, I create a new Java package here. com.shop me 
dot side dot um, shopping cart here and I create a new interface here the name of the interface is uh, card item repository and we have this interface uh, extends the the API repository interface and specify the type of the entity is card item and the type of the ID field is uh, integer and use the uh, annotation repository for this interface and now we can create a new test class uh, for testing this card item repository so in the test uh, source directory here I create a new uh, test class here shopping card test and uh, I will use uh, Spring Data JPA test so I use this annotation data JPA test and uh, I want to test with the real database so I need to use this annotation auto configure test uh, database and uh, specify the replace uh, is none because uh, by default uh, Spring Data API we use the in-memory database for testing here yeah, I uh, specify this uh, to trial Spring Data API to run this uh, test against a real database and I want to use a robot uh, force uh, so uh, it will commit the changes I made to the database and here I have uh, a reference auto wire to the, an instant implementation of card item repository here card report here and for testing uh, Springer data JPA test uh, provide a wrapper class uh, for the JPA entity manager that is that uh, entity manager here yeah. entity manager so I can use the entity manager to perform uh, common operations against the database and the first uh, test method is uh, for testing adding uh, one item uh, to the shopping cart one card item public void test add one card item And I can use the entity manager to uh, get a product mm, file by the class type is uh, product product dot class primary key is the ID of is the value of the ID. So in the database here, uh, let me see in the products table here. Okay, so I want to add this uh, product. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to add this uh, product. Nick uh, come here with the product ID is 20 here, you see. So I specify 20 here for the primary key value. And it will return the product object here and also I want to uh, add this product uh, on behalf of the customer of a customer so I look up in the customers table here and for the customer for example Tina Zamerson with the customer ID is 5 here So here I can get a customer by ID five customer dot class and ID is five here yeah. and it returns a customer object here 
Okay, so then I create, can create a new card item object, card item, new item, equal new card item, and I set uh, customer, and uh, set uh, product, and set the quantity, quantity is 1, and then I can call the uh, default method uh, save of the cache repository here cat repo save uh, the new item okay now um, we need to write the code to assert this uh, test method this, this will return a new card item saved Cat item, so we can assert that uh, this step cat item object has ID greater than uh, zero. So we can use the assert um, true from the unit here. Step cat item get ID greater than zero. Okay, and before running this uh, test method, uh, let me check the database, the card items table here. And you can see the table is empty for now. Now, right click, uh, run as the unit test. You see, the test has passed with a green checkmark here. Yeah. And let me uh, check the uh, database here. Yeah. Yeah. Execute the select statement again. And you can see a new row got inserted here with uh, product ID is 20, customer ID is 5, and quantity is 1. Uh, exactly the product ID 20 and customer ID 5 in the code here and uh, modify the code to add another card item for a different product uh, but by the same, same customer so I want to add the product uh, let's see Yeah, uh, I will use the product uh, with ID 100 here. So the ID of the product here is 100, same customer, ID 5. And quantity of this product is 2. And uh, run this uh, test method again. Okay, done, successful, and uh, verify the database here, and you see the second row was inserted for the product ID 100, customer ID 5, Quanti quantity is 2 here, perfect, and uh, we will also modify the code to add another card item with different customer and different product. So I choose a customer with ID. Um, uh, let me see. ID 8 here. Etan here. ID 8. And uh, for the product uh, with ID uh, 95 here. Western Digital Hard Text here. 95 here quantity is 1 here and uh, run this test method again
done successful and uh, verify the database you see now we have the third row inserted here for the product id 95 customer id 8 quantity 1 here perfect i will implement the function that uh, displays the content of the shopping cart first so i now i implement the method uh, file by customer in the card item repository interface here okay and this is a repository interface and we define a custom method a public list this method returns the collection of card item yeah and you can use the conventional method by spring data jpa um, file by customer customer object here and uh, note that uh, spring data jpa we uh, uh, defer uh, the method name here to generate the corresponding uh, uh, sql statement so we just define the method here in the repository interface and then we write a test method here the second test method here test and this time we test uh, to add items uh, by uh, customer or test uh, red items add card items by customer mm, and uh, because in the database we have the uh, custom uh, with id 5 here so I create a new customer object here. Customer equal new customer and set ID five here. Yeah. And I call the method of the repository uh, cat repo five by customer here, yeah. and it return a collection of card item objects card items and in the database you see there are two items uh, for the customer id5 so i assert that the size of the collection card items here equal to two mm, assert equal expected is two and actual is the value of the method size in the card items collection okay and uh, run this test method test get card items by customer you see the test has been successful perfect right uh, let me uh, modify the customer ID here to another value, for example, 6. And if I run this test method again, and it should fail. You see, the test failed uh, because no uh, customer with ID 6 uh, who uh, I added any products in the uh, card items table here and that provides the customer id to id 8 and you can see uh, there's only one card item for the customer id 8 here so we assert equals one here and uh, run the test method again You see the test has passed successfully so that's uh, for the uh, list items in the shopping cart by customer and we are ready to implement the uh, show a shopping cart uh, function 
Next, I'm going to create the shopping cart service C class here uh, to implement the business methods uh, for the shopping cart module. Uh, with the, the first uh, method is to list items in the shopping cart. So I create a new Java class here. Shopping cart uh, services and uh, annotate this class using the uh, service annotation. And in this uh, service class, we have a reference to the uh, card item repository and have a Spring Framework Auto Y private card item repository card report. Yeah. And the first business method is to list the card items by a customer. Public list card items. Card item here. Yeah. List card items by customer here. Yeah. For a given customer. Because the customer must uh, log in in order to use the shopping cart module and simply return the result the cart uh, report file by customer yeah next I will create a new spring MVC controller class the shopping cart controller class here to handle the request to show the shopping cart by a customer. Uh, as you can see here, as a customer, I can click the hyperlink card here to see the uh, shopping cart, my shopping cart content. And uh, I must log in in order to view my shopping cart. So come back to the project and create a new Java class here. Shopping cart controller uh, this is a spring MVC controller so we need to use the annotation controller here and in this controller class uh, we need to use uh, the shopping cart service class here yeah. cart services and have a Spring Framework uh, automatically inject an instance of the shopping cart service C class into this controller. And the first handler method is uh, to handle the HTTP GET request. As you can see here, when I click the hyperlink card here, you can see the URL here, show me slash card here. So the URL here is slash cart public string show shopping cart and return a logical view name of the HTML page that we display the content of the shopping cart. Shopping underscore cart here. And I need to use the model of Spring Framework here. And because uh, a customer must log in in order to use the shopping cart feature, so in this handler method, uh, we can get the authentication object that represents uh, the login customer. So in uh, Spring Security, we use this annotation authentication principle. Authentication. Authentication. And I need to use the customer service class in this project. Customer services, customer service, auto wire. And because in this uh, customer service class, I implement a method that, uh, the method that, uh, read the currently logged in customer here. So here I can get a customer, customer equal customer service 
Yeah, get currently locked in customer. Yeah, passing the authentication object. So in the project, you must uh, implement uh, a method like this uh, to uh, return the um, object that represents the authenticated customer in the application. And then I can call the method of the shopping cart service e class to return a list of card item objects. Uh, card services. Just card service. A list card items here. Yeah. Passing the custom object and it you know, returns a list of card item objects. Card items here. Yeah. And I put the collection card items here uh, into the model. So in the view page, I can access the collection to display the shopping card items uh, at attribute name is yeah, card items and value is this collection card items. And in this project, I need to set another attribute onto the model to display the page title. You may not need to use this statement. Shopping cart. That's it for the handler method that shows the shopping cart. Next, I'm going to write code to show the items uh, added by a customer in the shopping cart with the user interface uh, looks like this you see go back to the project and i create a new html file so in this project i have some existing html file here so i can uh, copy and uh, re reuse Mm, here I copy the home page index, copy and paste and change the file name to uh, shopping underscore cat dot html. The name uh, should match uh, the logical view name uh, returned by the handler method here. Mm, and this is the shopping cat html page. Uh, okay, and I delete the Code of the home page here, and I change the heading of the page to uh, your shopping cart. Yeah, and we need to configure Spring Security to require the user to log in to use this uh, to see the shopping cart. So we modify the Spring uh, Security Configuration class here in this uh, section here for the URLs that require authentication here I add uh, slash card here okay and now we can start this uh, Spring Boot application Okay, the application is up and running again. And I go to the home page. Here you see. And I, as you can see, I have not logged in yet. And if I click the card handling here, you see it requires me to log in here. And I will log in at the customer. Uh, who has the ID 5 here? Uh, the customer ID 5 uh, has the email. This email tina.samson at gmail.com here. Yeah. 
Okay, you see, and I have logged in successfully as the customer Tina Zamberson here, and you can see the heading of the best e shopping your shopping cart here, and you can see the URL here uh, slash cart here. That means the Spring MVC controller is uh, working. Yeah, wow, shopping cart uh, controller here. And now I will use the HTML code with time leaf with put tab to display the items in the shopping cart uh, uh, looking like this, you see. So I have a new uh, leaf section here and I use the glass uh, boot tab for a new row here. And uh, a sub deep section is you know, class column here uh, because in this uh, user interface, uh, you see I uh, define the paste into two columns. The first column is uh, for the items in the shopping cart, and the second column is uh, for the total amount and checkout button. Here we have two deep sections uh, for two columns. Yeah, I use uh, th uh, block from time leaf here, and I use uh, th to iterate uh, through items in the collection item with the status variable uh, inside the card items collection here yeah. card items collection is uh, sent from the controller here mm, controller here card items here and the uh, uh, sub deep section is has having the class uh, row uh, with a border and a uh, rounded corner here yeah. and also I have another nested div here with the class is column here uh, to display the um, number here the remove uh, icon here Div class. Sorry. Mm, here I display the count number from the status variable status dot count. And you see for the remove icon. Yeah. And the next uh, column is uh, for the product. Uh, Image here, class equal call here, and uh, I use the image tag to display the product image. Mm, THNRC uh, equal to uh, the path to the product image. So in this project, I have a product not main image path here. As you can see in the entity class product here, I have a get method get main image uh, part here that uh, returns the part uh, to the main image of the product here because a product uh, has a main image and um, other images as well okay save the changes and refresh the shopping cart here
we got an error. Hmm, let me see what the error is about. Yeah, property of few many missed path cannot be found on null. Oh, sorry, I need to have a variable um, represents the product here. So here in uh, this deep section, I have th with to declare a variable in tamif here. Um, product equal to uh, the value of the item here. Item is uh, of type. Yeah, car item and inside car item we have a product here you see car item product here okay so you see a variable assignment and uh, refresh you see the product image here uh, we have two products in the shopping cart of the customer Tina Jamison here and I you can use the CNS class of bootstrap to display the image uh, responsive to the user interface here using this bootstrap uh, class uh, image uh, fluid here and refresh. You see, it looks a little bit better, right? And then the Product name next to the product image here. Product name is uh, on the next column here. Leaf class equal call here. And I, I have a nested div to display the product name uh, inside a hyperlink. Hmm. Product dot name, and you can see the product name appears here. Nikon here, and Crusoe uh, memory here. And uh, below the product name is the uh, quantity. Quantity is the number of fields that allows the customer to change the quantity. And then the price of the product, and then the subtotal, which equal to the uh, quantity multiplied by the product price. Okay, so let me update the code here. So the next deep section is uh, for the quantity here. Input. Type equal number and the value is the uh, value is uh, the quantity value of the item. So I use tamif here to display the value of the quantity item dot quantity here. And you can see the quantity here. And uh, I use the uh, bootstrap CSS class uh, from um, control here. And you can see it looks better, right? And below the um, quantity. Uh, number of few is the product price uh, like this here so another deep section for the uh, product price span next multiply uh, quantity multiply uh, by the product price product dot price 
uh, let me see in the entity class uh, product here we have uh, price here okay and you can see the price here I display the dollar sign uh, before the price here and next is the subtotal value equal uh, subtotal later I will use uh, JavaScript as a query to calculate the subtotal so just uh, write uh, place holder here Okay. Now we can see the place holder for sub uh, total here. And let me update the code to display the um, remove icon here. In this project, I use uh, Phone Awesome library to display uh, icon so I used uh, a hyperlink here with the class is uh, FA, uh, FAS FA chart to display the chart icon icon dark is a uh, dark color of the icon here and for now the hyperlink of this URL is just uh, uh, the home page here mm, refresh and you can see the chart icon appears here uh, later uh, I will record to handle the click event of this chart icon uh, to remove a specific product from the shopping cart and the subtotal section should be in a separate deep section so it will be displayed on another row here and I use the class um, I use the class uh, heading 4 from bootstrap here yeah, to make the phone size larger for the subtotal and refresh and you can see here and later I will write our script code to update the subtotal of a product based on quantity and price here and uh, let me update the code to display the high blink that allows the allows the customer to click on the product name to see it uh, details so I use timelip th colon href here and in the product entity class I have a property URI here that uh, returns the URL of the product and uh, title for this type link is a uh, full product name product dot name here and uh, tar target is uh, blank so it will open the product details in a new tab with this uh, target blank here and refresh and you can see the product name is now clickable and I click the product Nikon here mm, sorry here I got error here refresh and click the product link here and you can see the details of the product Nikon lens here you see and click on this link to see the details of this memory and you can see the crucial 8GB memory here so far so good right and uh, let me uh, add some uh, spacing uh, into this 
the interface um, for the deep uh, row here I need to have a margin 1 here um, this here called SMH so it will be responsive on a mobile device uh, on smartphone here and the uh, column for the count number column for the product image column 3 and column for the product name and column 6 and ok and refresh and you can see it looks uh, a little bit better right and uh, we need to have some uh, spacing between uh, two between items here yeah. so here yeah. before the end of the block here yeah. the class equal row with uh, margin one here yeah. and a space here yeah. okay and refresh and you can see it looks uh, better right and the next uh, column in this uh, user interface is the uh, section that displays the estimated total amount of the shopping cart and the checkout button here so it will be uh, in this uh, deep section here mm, the first deep i used con small eight so in here i used uh, con small Four and uh, the first uh, nested dip is uh, for the estimated total tax. So I use the uh, spend tax with the uh, class is uh, heading three estimated total and the actual total amount of all products in the shopping cart is in the next deep section here i just uh, placed the uh, uh, placed holder and later uh, i will write javascript code to calculate the total amount here yeah. mm. total amount and i use the class uh, uh, heading 2 to display the total amount Refresh. Hmm, we got an error. Sorry. You see, estimated total and total amount here. Yeah. And the last row is for the checkout button here. Yeah. Button. Hmm. Check out here. Yeah. Class uh, BTN, BTN uh, primary and sorry, BTN uh, dagger. So it uh, we display in a red color. You see the check out button here yeah. and uh, add some uh, spacing around the button here padding 3 and as in top 2 and so you see check out button here and for the estimated uh, total total amount here And use the uh, margin top two for the total amount, and uh, margin top two uh, for the checkout button here. And you can see it looks a little bit better, right? And to test this user interface uh, for responsive, uh, you can resize the browser. Uh, window and here you see as a user interface uh, uh, become responsive 
adapting uh, with the size of the browser window and uh, in Chrome browser it's best uh, to uh, press the uh, key F12 here to open the developer console here and click the uh, smartphone icon here you see it will be displayed in uh, a smartphone screen and you can see the user interface interface of the shopping cart here it looks uh, responsive right okay so that's uh, basically uh, for the uh, listing of items in the shopping cart uh, let me log out from uh, this uh, customer user log out and i will uh, log in as another customer uh, with the ID ID is 8 here uh, ID 8 is the customer 8 time here to see the content of his uh, shopping cart Okay, I have logged in successfully with the customer Ethan Zones here and I click the card tab link here and you see there's uh, one item in my shopping cart here the Western Digital hard disk here and you can press F12 to see the user interface in a mobile device here you see quite good right now let me log out and log in as another customer who uh, uh, doesn't add any products uh, to the shopping cart hmm. Mm -hmm. In the database, I have the customer Chima here. Okay, I have logged in successfully as the customer uh, whose name is Avatar Chima, Chima here. And I click the card here. And uh, because uh, this customer doesn't add any products to the shopping cart so it should display a uh, uh, message so uh, I need to update the code of the shopping cart here we have another deep section here this, is this deep section we uh, displayed only uh, if uh, the size of the collection card items uh, greater than zero so we use time lift if uh, syntax here to check the size of the um, list and list um, is uh, empty for the collection name uh, card items here and then we display a message with heading 3 you have not uh, chosen any products yet and the section uh, estimated uh, total here uh, should not be displayed so we also specify a condition here with the time leap th unless equal to this uh, code here in case the uh, car items is not empty we display the estimated total section here okay and refresh and you can see the message you have not chosen any products yet and i log out and log in as um, tina jamerson here and you can see my shopping cart 
Nên S là customer Tina Jamison nhé. Next, I will show you how to code the quantity control that looks like this with the quantity number uh, at the center and two uh, buttons, uh, the minus button that allows uh, the customer to decrease the quantity by one and the plus button that allows the customer to increase the quantity number by one. So I uh, will use a template uh, fragment to create that quantity control. Here I create a new HTML file here. Quantity underscore control dot HTML. And I copy some code here. Body. And I use uh, time lift uh, fragment because this uh, quantity control will be used in two uh, two places. Uh, the first place is in the shopping cart here, and the second place is in the product detail page here, uh, as you can see here. Yeah, uh, I will replace with the quantity control here. Uh, replace this input here so the customer can easily uh, increase or decrease uh, change the quantity okay th uh, fragment and name of the fragment quantity control and in this fragment we need to uh, add two values, uh, quantity value and uh, product ID. And I use uh, bootstrap uh, pagination uh, style to make uh, the buttons and text uh, number field. Glass uh, pagination and uh, best item glass best and this uh, dust item and a high blink for the button uh, minus a glass equal paste link and uh, the custom name for this uh, have link link minus or minus uh, button with an empty uh, reference link and uh, I want to whip it a custom, custom attribute name EID for product ID so later I can use the query to handle the click event of this uh, high blink value is product ID passed uh, from the arguments uh, of the uh, name of the fragment here and the minus sign yeah okay and the next item is uh, for the input field that displays the quantity number input type equal text uh, with uh, value is 
value is the quantity value passed from the argument. And the last item is for the plus button that allows the customer to increase the quantity number by one. Plus button. Plus sign here. And in the shopping cart HTML page, we can use this quantity control like this. Uh, replace the input field here. Quantity and use th replace uh, to insert that fragment quantity control and the file name quantity underscore control quantity underscore control is a fragment name and we need to pass values for two arguments quantity value and product ID here which is the value from the item object here item dot quantity and item dot product dot id ok and refresh the shopping cart uh, I need to log in again. Cut. And you can see the minus uh, button here and the plus button here. And let me use the code for the input field quantity number here. With the class is uh, form control and text center and override the on key tab event to return false so the customer cannot edit this view. Uh, the customer must click the minus button or plus button to change the quantity. And I specify the style. And the max width is about 55 pixel. And I give this input field an ID so I can use JavaScript to update its value later with a custom with ID th ID equal to quantity is a name and uh, plus by the product ID because in the shopping cart uh, there can be one or more products so the ID of the uh, quantity input field here should be unique based on the product ID. Okay, let's refresh. And you can see it looks nice, right? With the quantity value and two buttons, uh, minus and plus here. And I also need to use uh, this quantity control in the product detail page. Here, this is the HTML page that displays the details of a particular product. And this is a button add to cart here. And this is the input uh, for the quantity here. And uh, let me uh, update it. So we can copy and paste here. Okay, and the quantity value default is 1, and the product ID here. Okay, and now uh, let's refresh uh, the product detail page. 
uh, laptops uh, Lenovo Flex and you can see now in the product detail page uh, the quantity control appears nicely here right and now we need to write some javascript using jquery to handle the click events of the minus and plus button in the quantity control here yeah. so i create a new javascript file and there's a static directory js here create a new file in quantity control dot js And I use jQuery for the document ready function. Yeah. And in the product detail page, I include that JavaScript file here. Quantity underscore control dot js. Yeah. Somehow it uh, doesn't. Uh, Display the JavaScript code, color the JavaScript code. Okay, no problem. And first, I handle the click event of the link uh, minus link minus button minus uh, button here on the click event. We execute a function here. And you can see is a link has a class minus button here. And I prevent the default uh, behavior of this link to execute our custom JavaScript. So I call uh, prevent default on the event object here. And then I get the product ID. Uh, this is a link and then I get the value of the attribute product ID P ID you see you see a custom attribute of this have link P ID here so this statement gets the ID of the attribute the value of the attribute P ID from the link here And then I read the value of the quantity quantity input quantity here you see the ID of the input field for the quantity number here quantity plus the product ID here plus product ID and then I can uh, calculate the new quantity is uh, decreased by one pass int uh, quantity input value and minus by one And then I check if the new quantity is still greater than zero. And then I update the uh, quantity field. Quantity input value equal to the new quantity value. That's it uh, for the event handler of the minus button that uh, decreases the 
quantity number by one. And now let's uh, test it in the product detail press here. Press F12 to make sure that we don't have any JavaScript error. Mm, but we got one here. Mm -hmm. Let me see. We got this error unexpected identifier at line 5. Line 5 unexpected here. We okay. Mm -hmm. Refresh. Okay, no error. And now I try to click the minus uh, button here. Click. But uh, we don't see uh, any change. Minus button on click event here. Quantity product ID here. ID. Mm, let's see the estimate code of this best quantity here. We have the estimate code here. ID quantity PID here. It looks correct. Uh, I think it's because the value of this uh, uh, quantity is uh, number one. Uh, that's the order than zero. So when we click the minus button here, it doesn't change the value because uh, this. Uh, Condition if here. Yeah. Okay. Now let now write similar code uh, to handle the click event of the plus button. So we can copy paste and modify here plus the button. And the quantity is uh, increased by one here. Yeah. And uh, Refresh the best test. Click the plus button here. And you can see the quantity gets changed by one here. When I click the plus button here. Perfect, right? And I click the minus button. And you can see the quantity decreased by one here. And when it is uh, one. Uh, it cannot be uh, decreased anymore. And uh, also, uh, when increasing the value, we need to check the quantity is not uh, greater than uh, 10. So the maximum uh, quantity is uh, 10. Uh, refresh and test again. Maximum is 9. Okay. Perfect, right? Next, I'm going to write code for implementing the add uh, to cart uh, function that allows uh, the customer to put a particular product uh, from the product uh, detail paste here to uh, the shopping cart by clicking the add to cart button here and before that the customer can change the quantity here so uh, on the server side uh, uh, we need to implement the add product method in the shopping cart service class and then uh, in the controller layer we need to code a restful web service controller here so on the current side 
uh, we can use uh, JavaScript, uh, jQuery, and Ajax to make a call to the server to put the uh, product uh, to the shopping cart, uh, proceed the cart item into the database. Okay, so come back to uh, IDE and uh, open the shopping cart service class here. And we implement the method that uh, puts a card item to the shopping cart public mm, integer. This method will return the uh, quantity of the uh, uh, product uh, that has been added to the shopping cart and product. Uh, argument the parameter integer product ID integer quantity and a customer object and the added quantity yeah, equal to the uh, quantity here and return and the quantity and first we need to get a product uh, object uh, from uh, the product repository so I declare you know, reference uh, to uh, product uh, repository here product report And here I get a product by ID, product report get, sorry, file by ID. The file by ID method is defined by Spring and the JPI product ID. And get here. So I have a product object based on ID here. Yeah, and then, uh, before adding this uh, product into the shopping cart, we need to check if the product uh, was added to the shopping cart or not. So in the cart repository, cart item repository interface here, we need to uh, define a new method that uh, uh, fire cart item by customer and uh, product so the method is public cat item file by customer and product with two parameters uh, customer and product And that's it. Uh, we name the method uh, by convention. So uh, Spring Data API will be able to generate a corresponding uh, uh, SQL statement. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, we need to get uh, card item based on customer and product here first. Cat uh, report file by customer and product here. Cat item. And we check if uh, cat item is found in the database. That means this product uh, was uh, added to the shopping cart. Else it uh, has not been added if cat item. Mm -hmm. is not null that means uh, the product was added to the shopping cart before so uh, we just increase the quantity mm -hmm. added quantity equal cart item add quantity and it increased uh, by the 
value of the argument quantity passed from the method here so the customer can add a number of quantity of the product here okay and we update the quantity back to the current item set quantity easy added quantity else that means the product has not been added to the shopping cart for this customer then we create a new um, card item card item equal new card item with the default quantity sorry uh, with some values for product uh, customer and quantity set quantity is a value of the argument quantity passed from the method here and also we need to set the customer and set the product for this cast item okay and finally we invoke the set method of the cast report to proceed this cast item uh, into the database save uh, card item here yeah. okay so that's the logic uh, for the method add a product to shopping cart uh, it is quite clear right and next uh, we need to create a restful web service C controller shopping cart rest controller here to uh, expose a method uh, add product to cart here this method will be consumed by the client uh, okay so we create a new java class here new class um, shopping cart uh, rest controller this is a restful web service controller so we need to use the annotation uh, rest controller here And in this controller class, I need to use uh, a reference of the uh, shopping cart service, shopping cart services, cart service. To why? Yeah. And uh, first handler method, first web service method is uh, to handle the request to add a product to the shopping cart so we need uh, to use the post mapping here now let me open the product uh, details paste the product detail paste here And you can see the button uh, add to cart here. Okay. So the URL is cart slash add slash product ID and slash quantity. Public string. Uh, this you know, web service method will return a string value. Uh, indicates uh, the message uh, of the result of the uh, add product uh, to cart here, and we map uh, the value product ID in the URL here using. Uh, Part variable annotation mm, with name is PID integer product ID and the same for quantity quantity 
quantity and we also need to get an authentication object uh, of a authentic of a login uh, customer authentication principle here authentication authentication yeah, because a customer must uh, log in in order to add a product to the shopping cart and also use the shopping cart module here we check if uh, authentication is null or the authentication is an instant of anonymous authentication token that means uh, the user has not uh, Authenticated yet instance of uh, anonymous authentication token. Yeah. So we return an error message. You must uh, log in uh, to add this uh, product to the shopping cart. to your shopping cart else uh, if the authentication object is not known and is not an instance of anonymous authentication token we need to get a customer object so here I need to uh, add a customer object so I copy this code and get the currently logged in customer here let's mm, return an empty string for now okay so I have a customer object of the authenticated customer here and then I invoke the method of the cast service uh, class here add product passing the product ID quantity and customer object and this uh, method returns the added quantity number here you see mm, added quantity and then I return the message is uh, added quantity mm, plus uh, items of this uh, product were added to the shopping cart that's it uh, for the add product to cart uh, web service uh, method and on the current side we need to use uh, javascript as a query to perform a just call to that web service uh, method uh, when the uh, customer click the add to cart button on the product details page here so I create a new JavaScript file under JS directory here. I can uh, copy and paste the code of the file quantity control here. Change the file name to add to cat.js. And in the product detail page uh, here, I include the new JavaScript file at the end here. Add to cut dot js. Yeah. And you can see the ID of the add to cut button is the button add to cut here. So here in this uh, document ready function, I select that uh, button by ID button add to cart here yeah. on uh, click event. We will run this uh, function. Testing last alert add to cat 
okay and uh, refresh the product uh, detail page here click add to cart and you can see is a uh, alert add to cart here okay that means uh, this uh, function uh, uh, was executed and now we write a method add to cart and invent the function add to cart yeah and in this function we we use uh jquery ajax uh, method to uh, call the web service uh, method in the rest uh, shopping cart rest controller uh, the add to add product to cart button with this uh, url pattern here So here, first we need to get quantity from the quantity control. Quantity. And because in the quantity control, the ID of the input field is uh, quantity plus by the product ID. Uh, so we need to set product ID uh, in the here you see we have uh, the javascript code that uh, set the product id in the product detail page here so in this uh, javascript file we can get the uh, product id here product uh, id and get the value of the uh, input field so we uh, get the quantity and then we construct the url to the web service and you can see in the product detail page, I also write the context part uh, here and the uh, CSRF had a name and CS, uh, CSRF value that are required by Spring Security when making a uh, um, exact request here. So here, yeah, context part plus. Yeah. Cut slash add and then a plus uh, product ID plus slash and then uh, plus quantity. So the uh, URL request uh, will be exactly the URL of the rest to web service method here. Cut slash add. Uh, followed by product ID and uh, quantity. Okay, and then we use uh, the query uh, Ajax method to uh, make uh, Ajax call to the server. With the request uh, HTTP method is post here and URL is a given URL here and before set uh, we need to uh, set the CSRF header so it will pass the check of uh, Spring Security HSR set request header See, yeah, we need to set the value of this variable. Yeah, header name here yeah. and the value is a CSRF value here. So it uh, we passed as a Spring Security check. Okay, and uh, we. Uh, implement the handler method when the request uh, has been done here we execute this function function with the response here and in the product uh, detail page you can see i have the code to use the model dialog here in the fragment fragments here And you can see the code for the 
the model dialog here standard model here that we display a model dialog uh, inside the browser to display a message okay so, so in the javascript code here i can select the model dialog um, title model title here the text is shopping cart here you see it's a model title model body here and the body of the dialogue model body the text is a response uh, sent from the server the response sent from the server here message here you see okay and finally we show the model dialogue uh, on the screen to inform the user that the product has been added successfully into uh, the shopping cart and we also implement the um, callback method fail yeah in case uh, there is error occur uh, during the call to the web service copy and paste the code here and display the body of the dialog is the error while heading product to shopping cart okay that's it for the javascript on the client side for the add product to cart uh, function okay now refresh the product detail page and press F12 to make sure that we don't have any error in the JavaScript code. Okay, the console is clear. Now, click the Add to Cart button here. Mm -hmm, we got an error. We don't see anything appears on the screen. Mm -hmm. I think we need to bring something in the shopping cart rest controller shopping cart rest controller here to be sure that this method uh, uh, was actually invoked okay so system that are not being like here yet product to cart here Uh, with the product ID and uh, quantity and uh, before returning here yeah, we just print item edit okay and let me check the database in the card items table here no new row inserted that means uh, this code on the server, server side has not been executed okay refresh the product detail page here click add to card button And you can see uh, the, the web service method uh, at product to cart uh, was invoked here and it prints the ID of the product 65 with quantity 1 here. Uh, but somehow, somehow the code uh, after this has not been uh, executed. Okay, so I think we need to check the customer object here. If customer is uh, no, then then we need to return the error message. Mm. 
in the same error message yeah okay save the changes click add to cart and you can notice that I have not logged it we still got error Mm -hmm. I think uh, we need to stop the application and run in debug mode. I think the problem uh, may be in the add product method of the shopping cart service he class. Okay, so when we have problem and uh, we need to debug or run the application in debug mode here. And I set a breakpoint at the beginning of this method. Yeah. Set a breakpoint here. Okay. And refresh the product detail page. Click the add to cut button. Okay and uh, switch to the debugging perspective in uh, Spring 2 3 ID here and uh, step over to execute the next uh, code and you see it uh, returns the message here because the authentication object uh, is no but somehow in the client side, it doesn't display the error message. Okay, so the server side is uh, working uh, normally. So click this uh, resume button. Yeah, on the server side, we don't see uh, any uh, model dialog. Hmm, I think I made a mistake here. Yeah, sorry. The ID of the model dialog is uh, my model. Yeah. yeah. As you can see, yeah, the ID of the dialog is uh, my uh, model here. Yeah. Okay, and refresh. Click add to cut. Uh, we need to uh, stop the application and uh, run in uh, normal mode, not debugging mode. Okay, uh, start the application again in normal mode, not in debugging mode. So the problem was in the uh, use of uh, Select in the query here. Okay. And you can see the model dialog appears here. Error while adding product to shopping cart. And uh, let me uh, refresh again. Okay. Click add to cart. And you can see the message. You must log in to add this product to your shopping cart. Okay, so I log in as a customer, Tina Zamerson. Okay, and I come back to that product, uh, Lenovo Flex here, and I click the Add to Cart button, with the quantity is a default value 1 here, add to cart, and you can see the message saying that one item of this product were added to the shopping cart, 
perfect right and check the shopping cart here and you can see the product Lenovo Flex computer has been added to the shopping cart here the last item in the shopping cart here with the price here quantity one here and we can verify in the database you know, execute the select SQL statement here and you can see the new row ID 4 for the drug ID 65 customer ID 5 quantity 1 here that means uh, the item uh, has been uh, posited uh, into the database perfect right and let me uh, log out and log in as another customer this time I will log in as the customer Chima okay and in the shopping cart of this customer uh, no products here and I will uh, add a product uh, for example I want to um, uh, buy a micro SD card here uh, Sandix here I want to buy two cards so I click the uh, plus button here to increase the quantity to two and click add to cart and you can see the message two items of this product were added to the shopping cart and check the shopping cart here and you can see the Sandix uh, micro SD card appears in my shopping cart here uh, with the quantity is uh, two here perfect right and let me add another product mm, I want to buy three cables uh, USB cables here I choose the quantity is three here in the product detail base and click add to cart okay you see three items of this product were added close and check my shopping cart you can see the second product uh, here the uh, whole iPhone check the USB cable here and the quantity is three here perfect right and let me check the database and you see there are two new rows got inserted into this card items table for the product ID 50 45 customer ID 15 quantity 2 and 3 here no, exactly quantity 2 and 3 here and next I'm going to write code to show the subtotal of each product here and then the total amount of all products in the shopping cart here and come back to the project and uh, for the entity class uh, cart item here I implement a transient method to uh, get the subtotal value of this card item transient here so I can write a vector uh, method that uh, won't be uh, used by hybrid framework public uh, float get subtotal and return uh, the product uh, price get price here yeah, multiplied by quantity that's it and in the client side uh, we can display the value of subtotal for the item in the shopping cart page Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, section that uh, shows the subtotal of uh, a product here. So here we print the value is um, item dot subtotal. Okay. And, uh, test again I need to log in yes the customer Chima views my shopping cart 
and you can see the subtotal uh, was updated for the product here. This product has quantity number 2 and multiplied by 24.99, so the subtotal is 49.89, correct? And the same for the second product with a quantity 3 and the price is uh, 11.99, so the subtotal is 35.97, correct? Okay, and I and a dollar sign before the price here. Now refresh. Okay, you see it looks uh, better, right? And for updating the total amount of all products in the shopping cart, we need to write JavaScript. So I will create another JavaScript file for the shopping cart. Paste here uh, shopping underscore cat dot js because in the next few minutes I will write a lot of JavaScript code to implement the update the quantity and update and remove a product from shopping cart. Okay, shopping cart here. And add the this JavaScript file in the shopping cart paste here. And you can copy from the product detail paste here. Shop shopping underscore cart dot js, and we write a method to uh, update the calculate the total amount of all products in the shopping cart update total and function update total and I need to read uh, all the values of all the subtotal in the shopping cart here Uh, so I give the uh, this uh, span a class a custom class name product uh, subtotal. So in JavaScript, I uh, can use the query to uh, iterate through each item with that class name. Here, yeah. mm, total equal zero point zero. And then I can use the query to select elements by the class name uh, product subtotal here. Yeah. And uh, for each uh, element, I will execute this function. Index is the index of the element and the element itself here. Yeah. And I calculate the total, uh, get a total value uh, equal total uh, plus uh, pass uh, float is a value of the element uh, element in uh, HTML. In uh, HTML is a value here, yeah, value of the subtotal here. Yeah. So I need to put the uh, dollar sign out of this element here span here class yes four okay okay and then I update the total amount here the section that so the total amount here, I give uh, this span an ID um, total amount here. Mm, ID equal total amount. So I select that element by ID here, total amount. 
and set the text is a value of the total here. Yeah. The text is uh, having the dollar sign before the total amount. Okay, that's it. And uh, we can uh, refresh the shopping cart here. And you can see the total amount has been updated to this uh, number value here. And uh, it's up to you to use uh, JavaScript to format the uh, number. And I log out. And log in as another customer to see the test uh, Tina Zamerson view shopping cart and you can see the uh, total amount is 876 here it seems to be correct uh, let me add another product to shopping cart and the total amount should be increased for example, I add a new memory here. No, I don't want to buy a memory anymore. I want to buy a optical drive here. Add to cart. Close. In my shopping cart, you can see the new product appears here. And you can see the subtotal, the total amount has changed here. Perfect, right? And uh, next, uh, we update the code, uh, write the code to handle the click event of the quantity control in the shopping cart page here. Uh, as you can see, as of now, if I click the plus or minus button here, uh, the quantity uh, doesn't get changed. So, after the code, we have the quantity control and JavaScript file here. Yeah, this is uh, for the product detail page. Uh, I can copy and reuse uh, the code. So, the reason that we cannot uh, reuse this code completely in the shopping cart because the logic is uh, slightly different. Okay, so I move the code here into a separate method. Uh, for example, say uh, uh, I decrease uh, quantity. And here, uh, the logic is different. Uh, after the quantity has been uh, decreased, we need to update the uh, subtotal and uh, total amount of the shopping cart. Mm, update quantity function update quantity and we will implement this function later. Okay. And here we have a reference to the link. This is a link here. And then we call uh, decreased quantity on the click event of the minus button in the quantity control. Passing uh, this as the link here. Okay. And similar uh, for the blast button here. So we cut this code and write a new method. The function increase uh, quantity link here. Link. Here yeah, and after increasing the quantity, we need to call the method update quantity here to update the subtotal and total amount of the shopping cart. 
Okay, and here we call uh, increased quantity. Yeah, with uh, the link itself here, pass to the method. Okay. And now let's refresh the shopping cart to test the quantity control. Click plus. You can see the quantity changes here, decreased, increased, but the subtotal and uh, total amount have not been updated. I will code the, I will write the code later. Uh, here you can uh, update the quantity of uh, each product separately. Yeah, perfect, right? You see, you see. Next, I'm going to invent the uh, uh, update quantity function for the shopping cart module uh, that allows the customer to uh, update the quantity of products in the shopping cart and save the changes permanently in the database. So, on the server side, uh, we need to implement uh, the update quantity method in the cart item repository and the update quantity method in the shopping cart service e class and the update quantity uh, method in the shopping cart rest controller class so let's start by updating the cart item repository interface here to define a new method that uh, updates the quantity of a specific product public void update Mm, quantity uh, with uh, parameters as the mm, quantity and product ID and customer customer ID uh, because we, we are going to write a custom query here for this method Query because this is uh, an update query, so we need to use the modifying annotation. Update card item C set C dot quantity equal to the value of the first parameter quantity here. Mm where c dot uh, product dot id equal to the second uh, argument product id here uh, and c dot customer dot id equal to the third argument customer id here so that's simple for the query that updates the quantity of a uh, specific product by a specific customer and then we need to update the shopping cart service e class here we need to implement a new method public update quantity with uh, parameters uh, um, product ID quantity ID quantity and customer object yeah and we call cat repository update quantity passing the quantity product ID and customer ID yeah And this method uh, will uh, return the new subtotal amount uh, after the um, quantity has changed uh, for this product. So here I get the product again. Product repo file by ID. Product ID here and get. Okay. And then I calculate the subtotal. 
equal to the product price get price multiplied by the quantity and return the subtotal and change the return type here to float okay and next uh, we need to eliminate uh, new method in the uh, shopping cart rest uh, controller here shopping cart rest controller here the method is something similar to the add uh, product to cart method so we can copy and modify here paste here and the method name is uh, update quantity and the url is cart slash update and followed by product id and quantity value so the method parameters are the same the code that uh, text authentication is the same and here we call the method uh, update quantity of the cash service here passing the product id in quantity and customer object and this method uh, returns the float value of the new subtotal and in this uh, web service method we return the uh, value of the subtotal in the form of string subtotal and that's it for the web service method that updates the quantity of a specific product uh, for a particular customer and on the client side, we need to write the code to invoke that web service method to update the quantity. The code will be similar to the add product to cart here. So we can copy and modify this code. The update quantity method here. Uh, need to have two parameters that are product ID and quantity and in the increased quantity method or and decreased quantity method we need to pass product ID and the new quantity here new quantity same in for the Increased quantity method. Okay. And the URL here is card slash update followed by product ID and quantity. Post here. And uh, the response is a uh, uh, float value, which is a new value of the subtotal. As you can see here, subtotal. So new sub. Total. And here, uh, when the invocation to the web service method has been done, in this callback method, we update the total amount of all the products in the shopping cart, as well as update the subtotal of each product in the shopping cart. We will implement this method later. Function update subtotal. Okay, now we are ready, ready to test the update quantity functionality of the shopping cart module. Okay, refresh the web application and I need to log in again as the customer, Tina Zamerson. Okay, and view my shopping cart here. And now I want to change the quantity of this discount lens to one by one so i click the plus button here and uh, uh, let me see the database first here and, uh, the nikon quantity one 
the Nikon product has the idea. Let me see. Yeah, ID 15 here. So we check the product with ID 15. Sorry. Product Nikon. Yeah, sorry, Nick ID 20. ID 20 here. So the first row in the card items table here. The quantity is one here. Now let me click the plus button here. And you see the uh, the number change to 2 here and let me check the database the quality is still number 1 so I think we got uh, something wrong update product ID quantity Template quantity here. Hmm, I think we need to print something here to check it's in the update quantity method. Update quantity. Hmm. Print the values of product ID and quantity and custom ID. Okay. To make sure that this method uh, is invoked or not. Okay. Save the changes. Okay, and I need to log in again. Tina Jamison. View my shopping cart. And okay, let me clear the console output here. And I click the plus button here. And we don't see any uh, output in the console view. That means uh, the web service. The method has not has not been invoked. Okay, let's check what is wrong. Shopping cart here. Context part is not defined. Sorry. So in the shopping cart. Uh, HTML paste, we also need to define the context part. Mm. CSRF had a name, CSRF had a value. Yeah. Shopping cart here. Yeah. Okay. Now refresh. Click plus button here, and we got an error in the console view here. Mm -hmm. It's uh, because we are executing the update query here, so in the services class, we need to use the annotation transaction here. Transaction. Yeah. Okay, and the application we restart and we need to test again. And I think this time uh, it will be working. Okay, log in again. Tina Jamerson. 
in a view shopping cart and change the quantity of Nikon lens here. And in the console view, you can see it prints update quantity product ID uh, 20, quantity 2, and customer ID 5. Yeah, and let's verify the database. And you can see the quantity value for the product ID 20 has changed to number 2 here. Perfect, right? And let me also change the uh, quantity of this product to number three again okay. number three and let's check the database and you can see it updated immediately right and for the product uh, for the customer id5 we have another product id100 with quantity two so i will change the product quantity two here this product, I, I click the plus button to decrease by one. Yeah, and let me update the database here. Yeah. And you can see the quantity for the product ID 100 changed to one here. Yeah. Perfect, right? That means that the update quantity uh, uh, function on the server side is working perfectly. Uh, click plus button here but you see the total amount has not been updated uh, also subtotal has not been uh, updated if I refresh the shopping cart by clicking clicking the cart button here and you can see the uh, amount uh, have been updated here okay you see now I will write the code to update the amount immediately when the quantity change shopping cart here yeah we need to update the subtotal of each uh, product after the quantity has changed here so yeah i need to have uh, Parameter new subtotal and product ID. So I passed new subtotal here and product ID here. Okay. And for the element that displays the subtotal of product here, I need to give it an, an ID here. Item subtotal here. DHID equal to the the name is uh, subtotal uh, plus by the product ID. Product dot ID. Okay. And in the JavaScript code, I, and I, I can select that uh, element. Mm, using the query like this sub total and plus uh, product ID and I set the text to the new sub total and that's it and now we can change we can test you know, view the shopping cart again and now I decrease the quantity of this product Nikon lens and we can see the subtotal uh, got updated also the total amount you can see i click the decrease the button here you can see uh, subtotal for this product uh, decreased as well as the total amount of the shopping cart here you see perfect right and let me also change the quantity of this product to number two and you can see subtotal chain and uh, total has been updated here. Perfect, right? And next, I'm going to write code for implementing the function that allows uh, the customer to remove a product from the shopping cart by clicking the chat icon here. Uh, 
you see so on the server side uh, we need to uh, implement a new method define a new method in the card item repository delete by customer and product here and uh, also in the service C class remove product here and in the rest controller class remove product from card here okay so let's start by adding a new method in the card item repository uh, interface here to remove a card item by product and uh, customer so the method is public void delete by customer and product and we have a customer id here and product id here and we use a custom query here the query is delete from card item c where c dot customer dot id equal to the value of the first parameter of this method and uh, where the c dot product dot id equal to the value of the second parameter of this method and then we need to annotate this method with the modifying annotation because it makes a change to the database delete the row from the table okay and in the services class we need to implement a new method as well for removing a product uh, from the shopping cart so the method name is public void remove product integer product id and customer object here yeah. and we simply delegate the code to the cart repository delete by uh, customer and product uh, for the customer get id and product id that's it for the service e class and uh, for the rest uh, restful web service e controller class here yeah we will also need to invent a new method which will be consumed by the clan So the method uh, should be uh, similar. So we can copy and modify. Um, here the URL is uh, cat slash remove and then followed by the product ID only. And the method name is you know, remove product from cat. And we need to have only two parameters, uh, product ID and authentication object. The checking for authentication is the same. Yeah, sorry, I need to update. You must log in to update quantity. Update quantity. And here the message is you must log in to remove product. Remove product. And here we call the method of the service class cat service dot remove product passing a product ID and customer object. And this method doesn't return anything. And here we return a successful message. The product has been removed from the shopping cart. Okay, that's for the server side. And now on the client side, I need to update the shopping shopping cart page here for the hybrid that allows the customer to remove a product from the shopping cart here 
so here I specify the URL is the, the URL to the uh, web service method mm, slash cat slash uh, remove slash uh, plus the product ID product.id and I give this uh, high bling a class name so I can even I can handle the click event on this high bling link or remove yeah okay so in the JavaScript class here I can uh, add a event handler for this for that high bling Yeah, I select that happening by uh, class name link class remove on click event and run this uh, function. And prevent the default behavior of a high blink and run our custom code to remove the product from the shopping cart the remove from cut here passing uh, the hybrid itself okay and i implement the method uh, for removing a product from the shopping cart here link here and the url is the attribute href of the link You can see the URL here. Okay, and the code uh, to make an exact call to the server side. So it's something similar to the update quantity method here. So I can copy and modify. You remove from, from card method here. URL here, post here. And the callback function uh, done uh, function here. And this is a response uh, from the server side. And the same code uh, in case uh, any error occur during the uh, invocation to the web service. Okay, and set uh, in case the method call uh, has been uh, successful. Now uh, display the model dialog to the screen so the user uh, can be informed that the product has been removed from the shopping cart. And I check the response if the response uh, includes the text uh, removed here. Yeah. As you can see in the web service method here, the successful message uh, contains the word remote here. And then I handle the event of the model dialog uh, when it is closed on. Yeah, on the event high dot ps dot model. This is the event defined by bootstrap mm. and execute this function e. Okay, and I uh, uh, yeah, remove the product, remove uh, product. I need to give a uh, row number uh, for the high blink, uh, delete high blink in the shopping cart here. Here. So I declare a custom attribute here for the delete high blink here.
so I can use JavaScript to remove the product th row number equal to the value the value of the status count here and uh, for the deep section that displays the item I give it an ID uh, th uh, colon ID equal to a row and plus by the value of the status count okay okay and in the javascript code here i remove the product by the row number so i get the row number from the high blink attribute value row number equal to link attribute name is row number here and I pass the row number into this method okay and I code that method function remove product for a given row number and I get a row ID equal to uh, row plus by a row number no no the row id is a row plus by row number and i use the query to select that element row id and remove from the document html document that's it and then i update the uh, total amount of the shopping cart update total that's it okay now we are ready to test the, the function that allows the customer to remove a specific product from the shopping cart and i log in again okay view shopping cart and i'm going to delete this the first product nick online here uh, this product has id 20 so ID 20 here. Uh, refresh, we have the row for the product ID 20 here. Now I click the delete hyperlink here. Yeah, we got an error. Mm, let me see. Mm -hmm. We don't see anything in the console output refresh the database and you can see the product id 20 has been removed from the database here but somehow you know, we got error in the javascript so it doesn't uh, get uh, disappear let me check the javascript code here remove product row number yeah, let me view the source code of this page okay so here we go here we go you can see the row id so row one here row number one here link remove here on click mm -hmm. yeah i need to show the model dialog here so the event uh, uh, hide the model will be uh, called okay and i display the text uh, for the model body here is a response from the server here okay now test again if you view the shopping cart again you can see the product nikon lens uh, was removed uh, from the shopping cart now i 
want to remove the last product uh, here so click this chart icon and you should uh, notice the uh, total amount uh, we get changed here uh, delete uh, we got uh, we doesn't want anything but in the database it uh, got deleted uh, you see the customer id 5 here yeah, and we see uh, this product ID 89 will be removed select you see the product 89 has been removed uh, but somehow the javascript code doesn't work uh, let me check again I think I need to display the respawn uh, alert, the respawn uh, from the server here. Because uh, this code uh, has not been uh, executed. Okay. We refresh the shopping cart here. And we don't have any error in the JavaScript console here. And I click to remove this product you can see the message saying that the product has been removed from the shopping cart click ok but somehow uh, the code here afterward uh, didn't get executed but in the database uh, the product uh, were actually removed the product id uh, you know, for ID uh, 65 here. Here we see 65 or 100. Here we see the block 65 was removed from the database. And we can refresh the shopping cart to see. You see now only one product. So I delete the code here to just show the model dialog. Okay. So it will be the same code uh, like this. Okay. And test again. Now I add another product to this uh, shopping cart. A CPU. Intel Core i5 here. Add to cart. Okay, view shopping cart. Now I click the remove uh, chart icon here. You see the message saying the block has been removed from the shopping cart and the model dialog doesn't appear. And let me check the shopping cart first if we have the section that. Here in this shopping cart page, we don't have the code to show the model dialog, uh, so we need to copy the code for a standard model dialog from the product detail page here. My mistake. Okay, so this time I think it will work. Okay. Uh, refresh the shopping cart, and now I will add another product. Digital camera Panasonic Lumix here. Add to cart. Close. View shopping cart. And now I want to remove the product uh, Intel Core from this shopping cart. Click chart icon here. You see the model dialog appears here. And you can see the product was removed and the subtotal. As a total amount uh, got updated as well. Perfect, right? So I can delete this alert uh, statement. Okay, that's perfect. So we have done implementing the shopping cart module for Spring Boot application. Uh, let me do the final test. Uh, I log out from this uh, customer and I will log in as another customer. Uh, for example, the custom uh, 
uh, the custom uh, go time here okay I have logged in successfully with the customer go time Nayak here and my shopping cart is empty now I add uh, some products to my shopping cart uh, for example I want to buy a smartphone here I want to buy a Google Pixel 4 here click add to cart here view my shopping cart and I see the product appears here if I change the quantity to 2 you can see the subtotal and total amount got updated to and in the database you can see here a new item got inserted uh, customer ID 14 product ID 41 quantity number 2 here and I want to add another product I want to buy uh, an iPhone as well I want to buy a new Apple iPhone X here add to cart close view shopping cart and you can see the second product Apple iPhone appears here perfect right and I can change the quantity here and you can see the subtotal and total amount got updated immediately also in the database as you can see here uh, product uh, ID uh, 40 quantity 2 here ok and uh, I add another product uh, uh, iPhone charger cable here I want to buy 2 3 3 items of this product add to cart view my shopping cart and you can see 3 items for this iPhone charger here and I don't want to buy a Google Pixel so I click this uh, chart icon to remove it from my shopping cart and we notice that the subtotal get, uh, will get updated you see subtotal get updated and the product Google Pixel has been removed from the shopping cart perfect right Awesome, right? So that you have learned how to implement the shopping cart module for a web application based on a Spring Boot technology. I hope you have found this uh, video as a good uh, reference to implement your own shopping cart module. Uh, please subscribe to my channel, like, comment, and share this video. Thanks for watching.